course, we are recording on our other laptop as well. Hi, Adriana. Hello. Hello. Hi, Bella. Can you hear me good? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Awesome. Okay. So let's, so let's take a take second, a second for, those for those of you who are, who are here. here. It's, it's a really, really important topic. topic. We're going to be We're talking about boundaries and self-realization and, self and why we need boundaries and why they will make or break you in your relationships, your day-to-day -day life. It could be, you know, even a, 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 a business connection. Um, they will literally make or break you. So let's take a moment. I'm going to actually share this with some of the Bellas on my page. Um, actually on the 1000 Bellas. We're not on our personal pages, yeah. <laughs> so we don't have as many people here to share it with, but it's all good. We're hoping that um, if you guys share it with two or three Bellas, then you know we'll have more ladies in here. So let's take a second to share. I am sharing, sharing, sharing. All right, let's do this. We're so grateful you're here. Do this. We are so loving these here. little shows on Mondays and Thursdays. We actually get excited for these. We actually get excited. Yeah, this is this is a yeah, big deal for us because it gives us an opportunity to connect with you guys and you guys and, and to talk. And, to talk. and you guys and know I like talking. talking. <laughs> 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 I think a lot of people love me. Yeah. To talk too, babe. Well, you know, sometimes I'm like, okay, shut up, Liz. Give Adriana a chance to talk. Because um, <laughs> Adriana will just let me talk. She won't be like, oh, well, well, she'll just be like, I will. Mm. I will. I'll just be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, hey, Marlene. Hey, Bella. Hi, Claudine. All right. Hey, Carla. Okay. Hi, Delia. All right. So, we have decided that our uh, sweet spot check-ins are going to be only on Mondays. Yes. All right. So we're only going to be doing this on Mondays, a sweet spot check-in, just because it takes up a little too much time. So we don't want the whole episode to be half check-in and then half message. We want to make sure that we get to the core of the message. Um, so it's Monday and we're going to do a sweet spot check-in and you guys let us know too in each area what number you're at so this time i'm going to start adrian i'm going to ask you Thank yes. you. yeah yeah in terms of your mental state today from zero to ten where are you at um i'm good i wouldn't say i'm great okay so i'm probably a six 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 and a half oh no my screen keeps going black again oh okay. keeps like at your house where i had to tap it you gotta figure out why it does that i don't know but if you see me lean in every every time you know yeah, why. gotta figure out why it does that yeah we have to figure that out um sorry so yeah so i would probably say between a six and a 6.5 um i'm very tired <laughs> we had we had a lot of fun this weekend. Yes, you did. <laughs> uh, together. Yes. Um, and I didn't get enough rest over mm. the weekend. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I would say that probably 6.5. Yeah, that's what I'm going to give myself. <laughs> yes. Actually, I took these that you gave him for Father's Day. <laughs> Uh, oh, you know what? I saw you with the bottle and I'm like, I wonder if that's Dee's bottle. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Dee. Yeah, I took, I took uh, two spoonfuls today. I actually have to re-up on my sachets. I, I honestly, I love the sachets. Me too. So... Convenient. I had one <laughs> today. Yeah. And I was tempted to have another. I'm like, should I? It's a little bit late. Um, but yeah, no. Okay. So yeah. you're at six. Um, mental, I'm, I'm super chill today. Like Mondays are usually like days that I save for content, like to write my emails and just check on my emails, clean up my emails, um, maybe take a course or like, you know, watch a video and a course that I'm taking there. Yeah. It's very chill, chill days for me, a lot of writing. So I did a lot of writing for, um, the thing that we're talk talking about. And then um, I, watched I watched a couple, a couple videos, videos and yeah. replied to some emails, made some orders, which is always really good. Yeah. Uh, so yes. CBD orders. Nice. Uh, yeah, but it was super chill. I'm going to give my day today 
just because of like, I allowed myself to just chill and write. And, and I, I did do everything that was on my time block schedule. Nice. So yeah, so it kind of felt good. So mentally, I'm going to say eight. That's good. Yeah, I'm going to say an eight. Uh, all right. Now, in terms of business, work, career. Uh, I think things are going really good right now. They could always be better because I'm always yes. looking for growth. Yes. <laughs> um, but I was going to say pretty, everything is pretty good right now. Um, yeah, I'm excited for what we have going on this weekend. Uh, we have another outdoor waterfront uh, workout, again, hosted by Tyra, who's going to yes. be behind. Actually, we have a partner workout this time. Yeah. So that's going to be super fun. Uh, yeah. She made like specialized exercises so you could do with a partner. So yes. really excited that. yeah. Um, and we had an amazing workout this morning. She definitely tortured us um, because we had a couple drinks this weekend. I felt um, it. I felt it so bad today. Yeah, so, me too. Um, yeah, no, all that to say, sorry, I got off track. We're talking about business, not physical. You, you went into health. You went into body and health. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> sorry, business. Good. I'm going to give myself a seven right now. Okay. Okay, perfect. You? Um, I won't stay too long on that. I, I had a good day. I had a, I had a good day. Um, you know, made some orders, paid a couple bills and just... Um, yeah, I had a good day and I was, you know, visiting my visual, my thing that I, I'm working on. So, yeah, I feel good. I feel good overall. Um, body, that, so today was extreme sweat. For those of you who are in Tara's class, you know, you already know. All we have to say is it was extreme sweat and you'll get it. It was killer. I was soaked, soaked, soaked. It was killer. Um, it drained me. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, even though we just had a few drinks, those few drinks, like they made a huge difference because we are healthy. We, we put a lot of healthy stuff in our body. Um, yeah. You know, we do apply the 80, 20 rule 80% of the time we're eating healthy, drinking healthy. So I think the alcohol kind of clashes oh. with it a bit, yeah. you know? Um, but nonetheless, I, I, uh, I'm on my second SOP <laughs> for the day. Yes. So I think most of it is flushed out now. I can tell because I'm not. It's funny, Adriana, don't you notice too? Like if you have a couple drinks, like I'm super bloated the next day. Oh. Yes. Super I'm actually scared. more bloated today. Yes. Yes. I'm actually more bloated today. And I'm like, that's so crazy. I never used to. I, I don't ever remember that happening to my body. So as soon as you drink the ISOT within oh an hour, you just so nice. Goodbye. Double, double again tonight. Yeah. Goodbye. Flush <laughs> <laughs> it all out. I literally, the double double kills me. So I separated them. It kills me. So body wise, um, I'm gonna give myself a seven just because I'm super zen today. I'm really zen. So I'm not like, nah, 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 you know, like uh, yeah, yeah. my normal self, um, but it's I still my normal you. self, but it's, it's just, I'm really Zen. So yeah, give myself a seven. So let's see if anyone, what about you guys? Let us know in terms of body. She allowed me to have two yesterday for the first time, for the first time. That's not you true. You guys calling me out on our show. He's like, <laughs> give me a second. I'm like, why do you need a second? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's funny. It was Father's Day, so I let him have two. Oh, there you go. There you go. She let me have two. Ah, I love it. I love it. Dee is like one of our greatest supporters. He's always here. Oh, always, gosh. always rooting for us. Always. Every every woman needs to have that man, whether a it's a partner. Yes, a D, you're right. Whether it's a partner, a brother, an uncle, a father you know, a friend like that, that we were talking about this this weekend, the alpha male energy, you know, and how important it is in a woman's life. So okay. we love you, D. We love you. We love you. Um, okay. So uh, Marlene said body six and a half, still feeling bloated from weekend in, yeah, indulgence. We're going to do a double, double. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Marlene. yes, Marlene. Hi, Sonia. 
Hey, cuz. Um, and then Claudine said seven mentally. Okay. Uh, does D train husbands? Yeah, uh, D, D trains. He does parking lot uh, driveway sessions twice a week, I think. Right. Yeah. So um, yeah, just, just contact him, send him a message, get, get hubby to message him and uh, D will, yeah, they'll talk. They'll talk. So ladies, ladies, Bellas and fellas, cause we got a couple of fellas in here too. Um, <laughs> hey mama. So we are talking about something, you know, really, really, really important when it comes to our well-being, when it comes to your well-being. Um, something that I find that we find, as we discussed, not a lot of women have set in their life, whether it's with their relationships, whether it's in their friendships, their family, you know. Um, so the first part, the first uh, video episode for the You series we um, spoke about self-awareness. The second episode was self-acceptance. And then today it's self-realization. And on speaking about self-realization, we wanna talk about boundaries. We wanna talk about boundaries. So first we wanna ask you guys, you, when you hear the word boundaries, what does that mean to you? And then I'm going to read, I guess, the dictionary. Um, version of it description yeah the, the, you know I'll, I'll read it i've got a screen to my left here i'm going to read it off the screen but we want to first ask you what does boundaries mean to you when you hear that word what does that mean to you share in the share comments hi michelle yeah share in the comments below <laughs> and um and let us know don't be shy while you're doing that if anyone wants to um, give us their definition of what they, you know, they think boundaries means. All right. Oh, oh, put limits. 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 Yes. Limitations. Yes. Don't let anyone drain your energy. Yes. Yes. Lena said, yeah. Putting up limitations saying no. Yes. Okay. In a nutshell, that's what it is. So it says here, the dictionary says boundary a line that marks the limits of an area, a dividing line, a dividing line. So I think what we wanna to do today, as we discussed, is just keep it super organic. We're just gonna have a conversation about times in our life where we didn't have boundaries and what the results were and versus our life today with boundaries. So we didn't plan any of this. We just said, we're gonna talk about boundaries, but I do want to start with asking Adriana, when you look back on your life, mm -hmm. at any point of your life, was there a point of time, point in time where you had with a specific person, whether it was a relationship, a family member, someone where, there was a lack of boundaries. And as a result, you were hurt. You yes, were yes. betrayed. You yes, felt yes. let down. Yes. yes. Uh, or disrespected. Oh, oh yes. yes. Yeah. That's I, a big I, I, I think, I think and maybe, and maybe I can speak for a lot, a lot of people. Of people I, think, I think personally, personally in, my in my life thus far, I've felt that in almost every aspect, whether it be a friendship, a family relationship, um, an actual like relationship with a partner. I definitely felt it throughout all spheres. I think the most difficult one, or at least for me personally, is with the family, because um, obviously the first thing you think of is that's your family. You're supposed to have unconditional love for them. You're supposed to help them through hard times. You're supposed to go through the thick and thin with them. Um, so me personally, and I did share a bit about this last episode, um, I did share that I have a very toxic relationship with my father and that's something that I struggled with throughout my whole life, uh, whether allowing him to be a part of my life or choosing to have those boundaries and push him out of my life and not push him, but more so saying like, either I don't want to talk to you if you're going to have this type of behavior or I don't want you around me if you're gonna to be toxic. Just knowing that I was worth more than having that type of behavior 
around me and knowing that it was okay, even though it is my father and or a family member um, to kind of put those limitations down and to say that like, no, I'm not gonna allow that. Like, even if you're my father, I don't think that it's right to be talking to someone in that way, as me I'm talking about here. <laughs> and I don't want that like in my life because it was trickling into my own relationship with my husband, because obviously he does Give us an example, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, my dad is very verbally abusive and very judgmental. And this is to me only, my brother and sister had a different experience and that does happen very often. I was gonna say. Yeah, so um, he was very verbally abusive with me and uh, very judgmental too, because obviously everybody knows I'm with a Jamaican. <laughs> um, and that was um, a lot of my, my issues with him as well, because he obviously had an issue with other races um, or me dating other races. And he always had these, like he says it are jokes, but they were racist comments or judgmental comments, um, even putting me down saying that I would never amount to anything, uh, especially if I'm with a black man. Um, I will only be a certain type of person because I'm with a black man. Um, so just a lot of negativity like that. And then I think I especially felt it much stronger after I had a really bad breakup because I had told myself I never wanna have any toxic people in my life. And that trickled into even my own family. Like, I was like, there is nobody ever in my life that will tell me how to live, that will prevent me from having peace in my life, that will put their toxic energy onto me. Just like Marlene shared, to protect your peace, to know that, no, I don't accept this. I don't feel good with the way that I'm being treated. I'm not gonna allow that kind of behavior because it's really us that's allowing them to, to be that way to us. So if you tell someone, I don't like when you talk to me that way and they still talk to you in a certain way, then you need, because the first step is to talk to them, obviously, to communicate how you feel, what you like, or how you wanna be treated. So if you communicate that and the person you communicated that to is not listening or is not taking your feelings um, into consideration, then you need to step in at that point and say, look, I'm not allowing this, I'm not accepting this, and I won't stand for this. So like I said, including right now, there's been many times where I had to shut my dad out. Like I personally haven't spoken to my dad in a year now, um, and I have no intention to until he decides to change his behavior, and that's on him, that's not me. So if he chooses to change that behavior, then maybe I would welcome him back. But until that time, I'm protecting my energy, I'm protecting my family, I'm protecting my relationship, and also I have a little girl that's looking up to me, and I want her to have the right views of how a woman should be treated, so if she sees her grandfather talking to me in a condescending way or talking to her mother in a bad way, she's going to think that either that's okay or that's what happens, so... Again, I don't want that because my husband is a great example of a, a, a partner, a best friend. And that's what I want her to grow up seeing, not a toxic man that's going to be rude to me. And I have to accept it just because he's my father. And so that's so deep, Adriana, because that is... That right there, you know, for some women, it's it's the it's the man in their life. The yeah, kids exactly. watching the man speak yeah. down to them, disrespect them, cheat, do all kinds of stuff. And you yeah. got your little girls and our little boys watching. And you know, and, and if we think for one second that that is not what our children is are going to be attracted to, you oh, were no. sadly mistaken. The, and it, they're older and wiser and they learn lessons and they get their heart broken at first what they're going to be attracted to nine times out of 10, because I work with youth, is what mom or dad were yeah, what they know. at home, right? So, you know, I thought physical abuse was love because I believed my dad loved my mom. Oh my God, of course I believe mm -hmm. that, right? And, I, and, and he physically abused her all the time. So I, same thing, like ended up with someone who was like that. So we have to be really, really careful um, we need boundaries, but I think it's really important that our kids, that our children see that we are living a boundary type life. Like we got, mom and dad has boundaries, you know, like got boundaries. So I, I think that's, um, I think that's 
really important. And you will, you'll notice too, like, it's funny how you said, you know, he, you haven't spoken to him <laughs> and it's funny how he hasn't reached out. And when people are so used to disrespecting us, mm. I, I, you know, I have a very toxic relationship with my dad, obviously two completely yeah. different stories, yeah. completely different stories. <laughs> you know, I have forgiven him. Um, however, there's boundaries. Yeah. There's boundaries because lines were crossed when I was a little, a little girl and it's still, it still happened. Yes. I love you. Yes. I would open my door for you. Yes. I'm, you know, but, um, there's boundaries, there's boundaries. And, and, and I think it's, it's what, what you'll see is when you start to set boundaries with people in your life who have hurt you or who continue to disrespect you, you'll notice that they will back off. Yeah. There, there's, there's too much pride to apologize. There's too oh. much pride. Who do you think you are now setting boundaries? I'm used well, to you're it. taking back your power, right? Yeah. Who do you think you are? Back your power. Yes. And they back off. And what a lot of women end up doing is, you know, especially when it's with a partner, is when that partner backs off, they kind of like, well, well, I didn't mean it like that. You know, it's just mm -hmm. that I just, you know, I don't like, you know, this and that and the way you talk to me and the way just to get them back because they're so broken and so desperate and so used to the disrespect. They're at, there's actually a part of them that's addicted to oh, the disrespect. Oh gosh, yes. It's, it's addictive, yeah. It, if yeah. all you know is that. So, um, you know, I, I, I say test the grounds. If there's people in your life that, you know, they continue to disrespect you. They continue to talk about you. You know, they continue to put you down. They don't support you. They don't, you know, they think they can just come around any and any time and you're supposed to just do whatever for them at any time. Like we all know those people in our life that we need to set boundaries with, right? Yeah. And that, that's with family. There's other types of people that we need to set boundaries with as well, right? So. Um, yeah, I, I also think it's important because, and especially as women, I think we're like expected to be a certain way. Like we're expected to always forgive. We're expected to be understanding. We're expected to be emotional. Oh. Um, we're expected to be a good friend. We're like, it's wow. like, we, we almost have to like be perfect. But what I, and again, this was through experience. I was, I didn't just become like this. This was part of my self growth uh, aspect. I told myself that I will never do something I don't want to. And I'm not talking about, okay, being taken advantage of or whatever, like even down to if my friend invites me for coffee and that day I don't feel like it. And it's not because I don't like that friend. I might just not be in the mood. Like maybe you're having one of those days where you just want to be alone, but then a lot of times we feel like, oh, if we say no, we don't want to, we might hurt their feelings or, they might be disappointed and they won't invite us again. But I always tell myself, like, if I don't feel like it, I'm not going because <laughs> I won't genuinely be in the right mood if I'm not in the mood to go. And I'm not someone that likes to be fake either. So yeah. I think it's, it might start off there where you need to practice those small things to then maybe build up to either the relationship or the family because those two are the hardest. Like if you're in a toxic relationship to get away from that person is extremely hard. I oh, think you need to do the self work first. Toxic relationship. That too. And actually, why don't you share about that a little bit? Yeah, because, you know, um, you know, so now we'll move from, you know, there, there's family, there's the family, the people, the family members you have to set boundaries with. And then there's relationships, you know, I personally was in a relationship. Um, I would say the most beautiful relationship I've ever had in my life to my last relationship. Um, love, like soulmate, like no questions about it. Like together, him and I, no issues no fighting, no nothing. And, um, you know, where I went wrong was, you know, dating someone who wasn't yet divorced and getting, you know, 
and you sometimes you you can't control these things you need somebody you know a soulmate like soulmates are once in the, like a few times in a lifetime you're going to meet a soulmate like adriana we say it all the time we're soulmates yeah, like yeah. you were twin souls you're we're soulmates yeah, yeah. that connection when you meet that in a, you know the opposite sex like someone that you're you're intimately involved with that is the most powerful empowering moving shifting thing that can happen in your life and there are people that live an entire lifetime that never have the opportunity to to, to experience that uh, for me that was my first ever and i am in my mid-40s like ever that i experienced that. um and it was beautiful and it was nothing but love and laughter and connection and support and like it, it just everybody loved it. we just we were just like that and you know where where boundaries came into play with me was you know towards the last couple of months of being together um it became a problem for a certain person and that became a problem in our relationship um, it wasn't him towards me. There was no, no disrespect. The thought of even another woman or a woman was not even, it didn't even, I never even thought of it. Like we were so in sync, like I said, soulmates. Um, but what happened was what he was going through outside of me, um, was starting to really affect him mentally. And mm. I was seeing how it was breaking him down, yeah. how it was crushing him. And as a result, it was crushing me and disturbing my peace. Mm. And because of how hard I've worked to, to create the life that I live, drama-free, very peaceful. My home is my sanctuary. I have no drama with my kids. I don't have drama with my family. Like, mm -hmm. there's, I've fought so hard. And don't get me wrong, guys, if you're thinking, oh, she think, listen, you wouldn't want to have walked in my shoes to get yeah. to that to get to be able to this point where I can say, I live this every life that's been filled with love and light. Um, I worked so hard on that. And as soon as I started to get affected by that, by watching what he was going through, um, like really like being there to see what was happening and how it was affecting him and his kids. And I was just like, I couldn't watch it. It, like I, I, it was like, I wake up and I felt drained and I felt sad and I felt sad for him. I can't fix this for you. I, there's nothing, especially when you have a twin connection, like a soul connection, that's a whole different connection. You know, yeah. some people are married for 30, 40, 50 years and never feel that never. Yeah. So yeah. that was a really, really big deal. Um, and I had to make the heart, one of the hardest decisions of my life. That was the hardest relationship I ever ever had to walk away from I've, I've well any relationship I've been I've walked away from and I was just like yeah boy bye like it was nothing for me yeah, right? right but that was soul crushing yeah but it was <laughs> yeah but it was harder and I felt more pain watching and being there to watch it all that caused me more pain. So, you know, and, and, and it was a, at first it was like, you, you know, you can't walk away. You have to fight with me with this. You have to stand with me this. We're going to do this together. We're going to, and I, and I tried. And then I was just like, I can't, like, I can't watch this. This is just, you know, go take care of whatever. And, you know, get, get peace in your life for you first, you know, peace, no drama, no nothing. And then, you know, whatever. But um, that was where my boundaries, when it comes to my peace, that was where that had to come into play. And that's why it's so important. Love or no love, soul connection, no soul connection. You have to have boundaries. Yes. You got to have boundaries. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's vital to, it'll make or break you. Yeah. And, it, and it, it's, and I think your situation is probably obviously the hardest. Um, because there was nothing wrong, right? It was an external circumstance that made it that there was drama indirectly in your situation, right? And I think that, again, must have been even harder for you to be like, you know what, like, can I step away from this? Because if you just think about your relationship with that person, it's perfect. Like, uh, real yeah, yeah. of the, of the uh, definitions yeah. of that, but it's like, 
whatever was happening around him, which also wasn't your battle to fight. That, that had nothing to do with you. And he, and he that was there before you. Good. You know, he, and that's what made me like, kind of like, okay, he protected me. He had my back. He covered me. There was no, you know, there was, there, our, our, our relationship was, was filled with truth. Everything, yes. was truth. Everything was, you know, I got your back for life. And we, we didn't, we didn't lie to each other. We didn't, there was no, 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 no BS. So that was, like you said, really hard. Yeah. Like I said, the hardest relationship, I, the hardest person I've ever had to walk away from. The hardest, yeah. like, and I had to go cold turkey. Why? Because oh, my God, yeah. boundaries tell me, my boundaries tell me that yeah. if I don't go cold turkey here, this is going to affect me big time. Yeah, for sure. I, this, I have to cut you off cold. Like no friendship, no nothing, yeah. you know, and to him, it was like, that's crazy. Like when you love somebody, you don't cut them off like that. You don't No, my boundaries are there to protect me. So because I'm being, you know, affected by what I'm seeing, my boundaries say, Liz, it's time for you to step back. You, you got to step back from this. This is not your battle to fight. Yeah. And, and the way you just explained it too, you, you were saying that if you love someone, but loving someone you're supposed to love yourself more than you love someone girl girl so you chose you over your relationship me. i and those were my those were my exact words i have to choose me right now i yeah. have to. i thought that, that means nothing about the love you had for him just the love that you have for yourself was stronger and it always should be stronger. and it's gotta be it's got to be. And this is this why so many, many women who are being crushed in their relationships, yeah. they're unhappy, they're unsatisfied, they're settling just to show face. Just yeah. to show face. They're dying inside. They're dying inside. This and they're true. still like showing up. Okay, yeah, we're still together and we're good and I'm happy. And no, you're not. You got no boundaries. So anything can happen, anything can do you at any kind of whatever, because you got kids, because you got some years together. No, you, you have no boundaries. And when you don't have boundaries, oh my God, listen, I was talking to this, to a friend of mine the other day. And one of the things I say is this, when you have no boundaries and you let somebody do any and anything to you, cheat on you disrespect you whatever and it and, and then it goes good for a little bit right so the, you you took back a a cheating partner or a cheating boyfriend or whatever it was or someone who uh uh disrespected you or whatever everybody has different issues right and you take that person back nine times out of ten right we're talking about like you're in a solid relationship and there's right. cheating, right? And then when you first meet somebody, I always say, guys, men always got some, but something going on. With oh them. God, you got to give them six months. Yeah, to clear up the drama. <laughs> to clear up the role of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it depends on your age too. You know, I'm- True, like, yeah. Like, like, okay, no, well, they ain't got no Rolodex at that age. No, 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 no. <laughs> In my 20s and 30s, I'm like, well, everybody's got something going on. Yeah. But, you know, when you take that person back, always know this, that- there will it'll be good for a moment but because you had no boundaries right it's only a matter of time yeah it's only a matter of time before it happens again before there's why because the the the, the, the that level of disrespect is so like once that's there yeah it, it, it's so hard to like fix Go back. that yeah yeah extremely hard <laughs> like borderline impossible almost honestly it does happen don't get me wrong I have some friends that had cheating spouses and they they are very happy today yeah uh, claim to be. um mm. but I don't know I think to each their own in that sense because I know I personally could never do that I just know like once that trust yeah. and, comes, and once that's gone I don't know I don't ever think you can I, get that back. Yeah, no, not for me. I mean, well, like I, no, I walked away from my husband for that. Um, I just don't play I, that game. I don't, I, I don't do that. No. It's just not, I love so hard and so deep and so like, yes. mm, like, 
like the way I love is like, I, I know, like you will never, you will never have a love like this again. Like, <laughs> I, I'm just saying like, yes, no, I mean, I that. So and I love so openly and so like, you yeah. know, my whole, my soul is open kind of thing. So for me, once that thing is crossed, I'm yeah. like, no, and you know what? I wish you all the best, but it, exactly. this is yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. I'm going to read a couple of the comments here. Um, Chantal said, once you feel the, that drained feeling, it's time to bounce. Yes, because it gets bad. And that's how women go into depression. And that's how a lot of other things start happening when you start to feel that. Uh, maybe the two of you will reconnect later in life. <laughs> uh, um, uh, no comment. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> it's written all over your face, girl. You don't gotta count. Please, I got boundaries. <laughs> I think you're blushing. Am I okay? No, it's it's. <laughs> wait, it's the rejuve. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, she was so funny. Yeah. I was like, uh, you have that right beside you. Yeah, I just, I put it on before we started. Oh, okay. Um, uh, hey, Bella's just got out of Tyra's workout. Oh. Oh, I got Marlene blossoming. Oh, girl, uh, nothing is worth disturbing your peace. As my grandfather always said, if you don't have peace of mind, you have nothing. Mm -hmm. um, yes, that's so true, Chantel. You have nothing. Oh, my God, there's nothing. It's priceless. You oh, can't Put a price on it like no, no. Oh, when you have peace you show up different in your work you crush different you execute different you love different oh, you, yeah. you want to know what my son said to me the other day kino you know kino is like a, a teacher he's like a, he's like a, a either, yeah either like a um what do you call it like a a buddhist or like a rasta yeah, yeah. or like a jesus like any one of them right he said to me mom a woman, he's like, you have like this, like magnetic thing about you. You know, you walk in a room, whatever. He goes, I'm going to tell you why. Men smell, feel, mm. and see peace. Oh, gosh. On a woman. When they see a woman and she's at peace, they want to know her. It's like, <laughs> there's something about her. Yeah. There's, there's a whole vibe about her. And think of like the women that you know that have peace in their life. They walk different. They talk different. They show up different. They're just, they walk in a room. It's not ego. It's not pride. It's not, it's not boastiness. There's just this thing about her, yeah. you know, and, and that thing is precious to me. Oh my God. Like I, that, that, like I protect it. Like it's, I protect it. Like it's $10 billion because it is. Oh my God. Yes. $10 like, can so buy it. No no. There's no amount of bag of money you could give me no. to, to exchange in that. Like it's, it's unreal. It's unreal. And you're so right. There's, you could totally see the difference in women those that have protected their peace and those that are walking around with a whole lot of drama to give. Yes. Yeah. And a woman who's at peace, another thing you'll notice about her too, is she, uh, her life is, the people in her life are peace. Yes. Her home, her home is yeah. peace. Yeah. Her home is peace. Her children are peace. Yeah. The friends that she has in her immediate circle, like my immediate circle is peace and love. Oh, it's gotta be. <laughs> Just peace and love. Yeah, it's gotta be. You know? So yes, Chantel, um, we totally hear you on that, Bella. 100% Crystal saying, um, Miss D, I couldn't move on from that. It would always be on my mind what are they doing when I'm not around? Um, a, ch a cheating husband, you mean? A cheating partner, you mean? Right? Yeah. 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 I think she's saying she wouldn't be able to stay with a cheating partner because she would always wor worry about what they're doing when she's not oh, around. That's well, that's what happens. It's, yeah. 
it's and not just that the worst is this this is a big one taking back a cheating partner okay taking him back when it was the woman that he was with or an ex the woman that he was with that left him oh. yeah so like being the second choice yeah. so what you cheated or just someone that you you weren't together and he was with somebody else that person left him yes. and you're taking him back yeah no <laughs> No. Would he be there if she didn't leave him? Not only that, it's like if he already did it once, like the chances of him doing it again, like that would be on my mind all the time. Oh gosh, for sure. Yes. For yes. Sure. That would really affect me. That would really, really. Oh, are you here because she's no longer there? Did you come back here because your woman is gone? Like yeah. oh, that would like, oh my God. No, yeah, no. no. My boundaries never, the boundaries that I have in my life would never allow me to do that. I wouldn't even be able to sleep next to someone that did that to me. <laughs> I'd want to strangle them in their sleep. Yeah. I always say it's because they're fighting their own battles. Um, who's that? Oh, cheating men. Yes. And and that's what I mean by it's not my battle to fight. Yeah. You you go fight that battle. You go, let me tell you, a a, a, a cheating man. If he does not like, I'm talking about men who just, they have good, they're happy. They have everything at home. They're yeah. good at home. There's no problems. There's, you know, and they are multiple cheaters or they're cheaters. Like you cannot help him. No. You cannot help him. He, it's so important to make sure he goes off to get help. You need help, hun. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with the woman. It has to do with you, with, with the woman. No. You know, like I was in a situation like that with my ex-husband, like it wasn't me, it wasn't my battle. It was, it has a lot to do with their childhood, what they've seen the men in their life do, what was done to them, what was right. So it's important that they go and get help. That, that has nothing to do with me. We, a lot of women, what we do is we, we want to help them and we want to change them and, 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 and you got to do this and you got to do that and don't. It'll be okay for a minute, for a minute, but it's only a matter of time. And we're talking about, obviously we're talking about multiple cheaters, like what do you yeah. call them? chronic cheaters? Like we're not talking about, you know, like just people who have drifted apart. There are a lot of couples who are literally coexisting. My sister and her husband were coexisting yeah. for months, months. Yeah. Nobody knew that. Nobody knew that. When I remember when Sue, when, when they broke up, do you remember? People oh. were like, I remember you, they were like, I was surprised. <laughs> they were like, Bonnie and Clyde, ride or die. I'm like, listen, it's a lot of, a lot of people are trying to save face. Yeah. Stay together to save face because of the kids. Finances, huge. Oh, yeah, that's a huge, huge factor. Huge. That's huge. What, in my life, right? But, you know, huge. And a lot of people stay together for the wrong reasons. There's no boundaries. There's no self-love. There's no res There's not even respect for each other. Yeah. Yeah. No. There's no respect for each other. No. Right. So we, we have to be careful of what we take on as well. We can't save people. No. Um, and that person has to want to change no matter how much you beg them, ultimatum them, like all those things, like that person has to want to change. And no one will ever force them to want to change. They have to yeah. want to do it themselves. Yeah. And honestly, Adriana, I think it's important for women and people to know when it's time to just say, oh gosh, yes. This, we are not in love. We, we love each other, but we are not in love. We are saving face for the kids and for a show and for our family, for whatever. This, like, it is this one life we have to live one precious life that we have to live yeah you're gonna live like that? no that's what i would think about all the time when i was in those bad relationships but i'd be like is this what life is gonna be for me this is because we have one life like you said and we never know how long we have on this life too like if i'm only gonna live 10 years i'm not gonna want to live 10 years of misery i'm gonna try to make those 10 years the best years of my life and 
being in a toxic relationship will never bring you. And even if that person is nice one day, one week, one month, and then go back to their bad behaviors, what makes you think that that's ever going to change? It's never going to change. No, no, no. And even if it's, even if they're like, say for instance, there's no bad behavior. You just live like you're, you, you love each other. Right. But sister, roommates, roommates. That was my sister. That was my parents. Yep. Yep. Oh, there's so much. My brother and his wife. Yeah. Yeah. They split up after what? 25 years. Wow. Roommates. Yeah. Like, like I see it all. And it's funny, Adriana, because a lot of the people that I meet now, like even the men that are my age that I talk to, interact with, like there's so much of that going on right now. People uh -huh. se separating in their 50s, er late 40s, early 50s, mid 50s. And it's like, yeah. you knew this relationship was over in your 30s, but you stayed the same face. You're describing my parents right now. Yeah. yeah. See? And if I could tell all the viewers like if you think that you're just going to be able to get over those 30 40 years of being married in a toxic relationship it might take you another 30 40 years to get out of that of the healing from that like the faster you can get out the better it is and again a lot of people stay for the kids a lot of people like you said stay for the finances but again what a sad 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 way so God, like so that, sad. that crushes just my soul to think, you know, like it, 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 it really is, man. What, what a way. Oh, uh, D said because of COVID. Yeah. A lot of people are realizing, you know, they don't like each other. No, I, it took me 30 years to realize I love you. Yeah. You're my child. You're the mother of my kids. My, you're the father, but I don't, I don't I'm like not in love with you. Yeah. In you I don't like you like I'm we, we you don't really have anything in common you don't light up my soul you don't like 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 a, when I think of a relationship when I th when I think of the relationship that God has for me whoo firecrackers girl all day yeah yeah, yeah. Like, oh you know the honeymoon stage no no I'm sorry oh. I'm the honeymoon every day I oh god you yeah. can you gotta put in the work but you can Everything, love making everything like everything's gonna be firecrackers all day <laughs> hey like, girl it is possible i'll tell you that it is possible of course it is of course it is like you know when, especially two people that are into each other yeah like and, and then girl like when you captain yeah oh hey baby when you meet somebody when you get into a relationship as you're older too right yeah. like late 30s 40s like when you get into a relationship, not, I'm not talking about teens, twenties. First of all, I know myself more today than I've ever known in my life. Say hi. Hi, Captain. <laughs> I know myself. Wash your hands, Papa. I know myself more. Oh, can you do me a favor, Captain? Um, oh, no, it's okay. I got it. I know myself more now than I've ever known ever in my life. Yes. I've never, like, I know more about me. I know what I like. I know how I like it. I know what, yes. you know, I know what blows my mind. I know where, when, and how I like, I know the kind of things I want. Huh? I said, where, when, and how, you know, yes. all, of all that. I even like in my finances, even with my career, my purpose, my job, my business, like what I'm bringing to the table is huge. Like, yeah, love, light, like yeah. purpose, you know? So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited because I know myself more now than I've ever known in my life. Yes. So, and in saying that, ladies, for those of you who are single, it's so important. You know, we're talking about self-realization. It is so important. Like when you end a relationship, you know, we're talking about boundaries, but I, I find, I think it's just really important to add this. When you end a relationship or you're in a relationship, it's so important. We said this before to, to be alone. Oh, realize who you are, go back and discover pieces of you that might've been stolen or abused or crushed in that relationship. Spend time alone, you know, get to know who you are. What do you really want in a partner? What are you bringing to that partner? You know, work on those things for yourself, but 
you know, I, I just think it's important to take time. Like everybody jumps from jumping, 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 and they get out of this relationship and they just want to feel love again. And they want to uh, feel touched and like, uh, you're broken. There's broken pieces there that need to be healed. And they don't, it doesn't happen in a few months. Yeah. And you don't find out about yourself through someone else. You find out about yourself by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so by you got to do that uncomfortable work by yourself. First. By yourself. That's so true. I mean, you, you even think of women. I'm going to speak to about women because, you know, we are emotional beings. Yes. And I think it's, I, I'm not going to say it's not, it's important for men too to spend that time alone. To oh, get yeah. alone. But I think for women, because we're so emo, emotional, like a lot of men have sex when there's no, there's not even emotions involved. They don't need emotions involved. Right. So with women, we get so caught up you know, and so into that person and, you know, and then things aren't going right and it's affecting your mind. It's affecting the way you parent, the way you, you, you how you show up at work. It's affecting every part of your being, every part of your being. So how do you go from that, that ends and then you jump into, you haven't even healed that yet. No, you're going to repeat the same thing all over again and maybe in a different form, but it's going to be the same thing all over again. You definitely need to dissect that situation, figure out maybe what you accepted that you shouldn't have or what you may have done wrong or where you went wrong. You really have to analyze what happened there and then grow from there. Like, okay, if, if you let someone walk all over you, well, you realize I don't like that feeling. I don't want to ever do that again. So what do I need to do to make myself stronger to not allow that to happen again? Yes. Boundaries. Yes. Yes. Boundaries. That's exactly what it is. It's the boundaries. You got to have boundaries with your kids, with the people you're involved with, your relationships, your parents, your family. There's got to be boundaries. So this is 824. I was about to say <laughs> is going to boot us out after an hour so we're going to end this um we're, we are we have one more session for the youth session that we're excited about this thursday we'll be announcing it um we just want to say thank you guys so much like for those of you who who you know you sit here with us you, you know listen we came up with this idea you know not only so that we hold ourselves accountable to show up for you guys for you bellas and fellas but really to just have real conversations yeah. organic conversations we we do so much on a day-to-day -day basis we don't really share those pieces of our we don't yeah. share that kind of stuff about my personal life i don't i don't i don't use social media for that yeah. but you know i think with these kind of conversations it's important to let you know that we are we're human beings we're just two real chicks just like you guys and yeah. we have real stories and we feel pain and joy and sadness and all of that so yeah, all of the above. <laughs> Perfect timing because Kino just walked in and I know he's not going to want to be in this camera. <laughs> so this is good. I uh, love this episode. Thank you. Glad I could get on to here enough. Have an amazing day. Thank you, Belda. Bella, Belda, because her thing's Bella. Thank you, all. We love you, girl. Tyra. Yeah. Hey. We love you, Tara. Elda just said you kicked her butt this evening. We're like, oh. we the 10 o'clock class. Um, so we love you guys. Have a fantastic day. And we will see you right here uh, this Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Okay, hold on. I got to end this one now. 